so welcome back to my youtube channel this is the highly anticipated video about how i started my luxury handbag company my handbag company is called Andi, and i feel like this is a question that i just get all the time whether it be on instagram and our dms whether it be from family members personal friends like this is something that literally the streets have been wanting to know and i felt like it just was perfect and just so fitting to come on my youtube channel and do a video about this topic and i want to let you guys know as well ask me some questions you know if it's something that you have a question about as it pertains to me starting my handbag company comment below i would love to answer some of the questions that um you guys might have pertaining to this topic because i definitely feel like we need more you know black owned handbag companies we need more black owned fashion brands so ask your questions below and however i can help i would love to do that so yeah getting into it y'all i thought that this was going to be one of the easiest things i've ever done and i thought that because i've always had like a love for fashion particularly handbags and shoes shoes probably prior to you know handbags but i've always loved those things i've always love luxury so i felt like okay this is going to be a walk in the park this is going to be so easy because i know exactly what they want i know the colors that they want i know the material that they want i know uh the style of the bag that they want you know i just thought i was just going to like knock this out the park right so when i got the idea to start a handbag company back in like 2016 2017 immediately fear kind of took over me because I was always a big uh, label snob, you know, so to speak, you know, a lot of Louis Vuitton bags, a lot of, you know, this kind of bag, whatever. And so in my mind, it was almost like, how can I compare to these fashion brands that have been around for a hundred plus years? You know, how can I compare to these fashion brands that they have a bunch of investors behind them? How can I compare to these fashion brands that you walk outside in New York City, in Chicago? here in dallas in dc in baltimore and everybody and their mother only wants to wear this brand you know i felt like i was such a small fish in a in a big pond that was just going to get sucked under so i'm gonna be completely honest and say i was like too scared to even start at that time i was too scared to even imagine you know being in this place now back at that time years and years and years ago so fast forward to 2018 i got married and those of you that may or may not know my husband is actually an entrepreneur as well and so my husband kept asking me like what are you doing with this handbag company and i'm like what handbag i don't have a handbag company he's like no but you said you know that this is what you wanted to do he's like reminding me don't that be annoying y'all how your spouse be like no but you said this he's like you said you know that this is what you wanted to do so you know we need to do it now just really quick background on my husband um he has his own product development agency so this is literally what he does like people come to him with ideas he helps them get the vendor he does all the sourcing helps them with all the manufacturing and so y'all know he was excited because he's like oh my wife is about to basically you know be my client and i'm about to you know get her little or whatever so he's constantly you know asking me about this and i'm like babe i don't know like maybe can i do something else can this be you know five ten years from now you know maybe i have a little bit of time i'm just you know not really sure about this so fast forward to 2020 the pandemic hits everybody's in the house you ain't got nothing but time to think about all, all the things that god did told you to start that you ain't started <laughs> so here i am march of 2020 and his handbag line is coming up because all the handbags that i had in my closet at the time didn't mean anything because you can't go anywhere so i'm like okay you know let me really figure this out and see if i can do this so june of 2020 i started the process of sourcing and looking into different manufacturers once again i thought that this was going to be a walk in the park i thought the hardest thing was actually starting right but the hardest thing actually was sourcing because especially with a product like a handbag you have to vet through the different manufacturers you have to get samples which you're actually paying for and then you actually have to test out the samples now i'm not that person that's like oh let me wear this bag for a couple of days 
I wanted to test each bag for like 30 to 60 days. I want to see if the handle going to come off. I want to see what it's going to do in the wear and tear. I want to see if I let my son throw it across the room. Am I still going to be able to pick it up? Like these are all things that I wanted to know. I really, really, really wanted to tap in and make sure that it was going to be the best quality for my customers. And so it took me about four to five, maybe even six manufacturers to find my manufacturer so it was a very lengthy process um it took me almost a year to basically find you know my manufacturer so that's what that part was like and then there's the next step you know you find the manufacturer that you love and now it's like ring hello you ready to place your big order you got you know all these thousands of dollars you know laying around to basically put into this and so Thankfully, when I started my handbag company, that was not my first business that I started. So I had funds from other businesses that I was able to leverage to go on over and invest in my handbag company. But if you're starting a handbag company, a fashion brand, any kind of product based business, product based businesses are the most important or important expensive. I mean, businesses to start because you have to invest in the product oftentimes before you're getting any sales and then also you have to invest in the marketing and the, the marketing costs um, are a lot higher than you know investing in marketing i would say for like a service-based business right so it was that part and you know that's when the fear came back up because i'm looking at you know the prices for these products and i'm like whoo and you know there's moqs that you have to meet and there's things like that like you know in a service-based business you kind of make your own rules you get your little laptop going you get your camera you get your backdrop you get whatever you need and you tell people where to go and how to get there it's like that's what you do with a product-based business every manufacturer has their different rules every vendor has their different rules there's a lot of things there's a lot of questions to be asked there there was also the question of do i want to get my products manufactured overseas do i want to manufacture them in the usa you know what's going to be my signature what's going to be my thing that i do um a little bit different than what a lot of people a lot of other people were doing it was a lot of that but another thing that i was dealing with was that there uh was already a marketplace of black owned particularly black owned handbag designers so for a lot of people i mean i can remember some friends even straight up telling me oh well so and so has the bad game on lock and see that's that's one of the messages i really want you guys to take away from this video if god tells you to do something there's a place for you there's no such thing as so and so has it on lock well they might have it on lock but god didn't gave me a key to I'm gonna get in the room too period so don't feel like because somebody else is in that industry and they're killing it that you can't come in that industry and kill it in your own space as well so it was a lot of that because a lot of these uh fashion brands that were out there and they were specializing in handbags they already had these like cult like followings i mean y'all know like you know there people have bag security you know with their brands and things like that i mean it's it's a big thing you know there's people all over twitter every time it's a drop for certain brands that's all you see so i wasn't walking into an industry and there's not already notable people that also look like me you know that's inside of this industry so i had to get my confidence up now i've never been the type of person that really struggled with confidence but confidence is always interesting when you're in a new industry that you've never been in before i had to really say it with my chest you know this is my brand this is what we do this is what we specialize in um even in the midst of some people feeling like well your bags should look a certain way because that's another thing in fashion everybody thinks that they are like the joan rivers they are the fashion police they can tell you that you should do this so when i first came out with my handbag brand it was received very well but there was a lot of people that made comments like well do you have it in this color do you have it in that and you know this is why you have to have a tough skin because people kind of don't know that that's honestly like a little bit rude like imagine going in neiman marcus and seeing a pair of shoes and saying well don't you think that they could have made it like this what that's not really how that works it's how they make it and then you buy it if you like it if you don't like it then you go and you buy something else right but i guess because people hear small business they think that you know having these kind of conversations with you is something that they can do they think that they can basically like talk down to you so once again you know i had to really just develop that tough skin um but another thing that i had to do when i started my handbag brand was i had to wait my turn you know like i said 
there was a lot of other people that were already killing it in the handbag game so here i come i'm this new brand nobody knows about me yet nobody knows if the brand is really the quality that i say that it is and I'm just out here like, hey, y'all, you know, it's me. It's my brand. It's Andy. You know, go to shopandy.com and, and shop us, right? So I didn't know uh, how it was going to happen, but I just knew that it was going to happen. So fast forward to, I believe that it was like uh, March of 2021. So this was like three months after we started. And that was the very first time that we went viral. Um, the site shopandy.com nearly crashed. People came on there literally in one day. All the remaining inventory that I had completely sold out. There was a, a waiting list, you know, for different products to come in stock. And it was amazing. And just I'm getting like emotional even thinking about it because God is so good that like I said when he tells you to do something there is definitely a place for you but you have to be obedient and you have to execute and you have to execute in the midst of the naysayers you have to execute in the midst of the people that don't understand you have to execute even in the midst of the people that feel like they don't like your product even to this day it's people that will say well can you do this no if you want that then start your own brand it's that simple just like what I wanted I started my own brand i felt like um even though there's a huge space of of black owned fashion brands what i didn't see a lot in the marketplace in my opinion was simplicity and that's something that i like with with everything that i purchase my shoes my bags i like simplicity i like pieces that i feel like 10 years from now i'm still going to be able to rock this and it's going to look like i just purchased it yesterday now not to say that there's nobody else in this space you know that's doing that but i wanted to do it in a different way i also wanted to um offer more vibrant colors i know minimalism is something that's really popular so with my first line it was more minimalist you know there was a black croc bag and then there was a, a neutral colored like tan um croc bag right but then after that i'm like okay let me hit them with the neon blue let me hit them with the neon green let me hit them with the neon pink we can ready do this you know uh white croc bag like i was excited you know about really being able to just try different things and i really 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 my biggest purpose behind starting Andy was that i wanted black women to know that they are loved and appreciated by the brand that they are actually patronizing um i'm not gonna say the brand but back in 2013 when i first like started making good money as an entrepreneur i had a terrible experience inside of a designer store in vegas i remember i was staying at a hotel y'all know how the hotels in vegas they have like um downstairs like a lot of the like luxury shops and you know stuff like that so i was staying in the hotel and i remember probably since i was in college so since probably like 2006 i had this one bag on my vision board i'm like that's my arrival bag that's my bag that's like everybody's gonna know that i have arrived when i'm basically carrying that bag right so i was excited y'all i got to vegas i'm like i'm buying this bag in a different city you know it is lit like i'm about to be posting my little picture on the gram with my little box and you know it's i'm gonna be hyped basically right so i walked into the store i'll never forget walked in the store with me and my aunt we were all it was me my aunt um, my mom and I want to say one of my like little cousins or something that walked in the store. We go in the store. Nobody greets us. Nobody says hello. Nobody says, can I help you with anything today? Instead, when they did open up their mouth, they asked us where we lost. They asked us where we looking for something else. Imagine going into a store that you've been standing since you was a little kid, you done had it on your vision board, you've been, you know, singing its praises and talking to your friends about it and sending screenshots to your friends and you've been doing the virtual window shopping, adding it to your bag, you know, and things like that. And you go in a store and they ask you, are you lost? Which basically translation, you don't look like you should be shopping here. You don't look like you can afford things that we sell you don't look worthy enough to wear the things that we sell right so i was like infuriated right but i was infuriated to the point that that might not have been the day that i started my handbag company but i always say that was the day that the seed was planted in me because 
You don't deserve to treat me like this when people that look like me are the reason that you're still in business. You don't deserve to treat me like this when hip hop culture is rapping about you in songs. You don't deserve to treat me like this when there's a husband somewhere that spent his last on this bag because this is what his wife is saying that she wants, you know, for Christmas or their anniversary or whatever. So it lit a fire in me. It lit a fire in me to shop from brands that actually respect me as a person. It lit a fire in me to actually shop in brands that respect my people. A lot of us, you know, we support these designer brands and we really don't understand the root of them. We really don't understand the history. We really don't understand the origin. We just feel like so-and-so wore this in their video and so let me go out and let me wear this. But in all honesty, a lot of these companies don't want us wearing their stuff, you know, and it's not a secret. They treat us like that. You can find five, six people and they or more and they will tell you that they felt the same way walking into these type of stores. So that was one of my biggest motivations behind Andi. Um, also growing up, Andi, just to give you all some background, Andi is my middle name. And my middle name is actually African. And so growing up, I hated my middle name. I'm gonna be completely transparent. I was like, mm, nope, I want a cute middle name. You know, I want my middle name to be something like, you know, fancy and something that sounds, you know, Italian and European and, you know, this whole type of thing. And so I remember one day as a kid, literally going to my mom and saying, why did you give me this ugly middle name? Like I straight up had a question for her. I'm like, why did you give me this ugly middle name? And she said, Raven, you were named after a prominent businesswoman. She's like, she was very well off in business, very high ranking in business and your middle name is African. So she's like, it meant a lot to me. Even still as a child, I'm like, this middle name is dumb. I don't even wanna tell people. If they ask me what my middle name is, I'm just gonna say A, I'm just gonna say it's a letter. I'm not giving them the whole name. They mess it up, you know, when I try to say it and it's just a mess. But look at God, how he will literally have your parents addressing you, even from a baby, to who he's called you to be. Look at the businesswoman that I am, and look at how I'm literally named after a businesswoman. I find that amazing. I also feel like I wanted to call my brand Andi because that's who my customers are. They're high ranking in corporate America. They're high ranking in uh, entrepreneurship. Even if they're stay at home moms, they're high ranking in the, the mom world. My customers are successful women. They're successful at whatever it is that they set out and aspire to do you guys. Another reason I wanted to call it that is because I need y'all to know that Something doesn't have to have a European name to be considered luxury. Black is luxury. Africa is luxury. We are luxury as a people. And respect is something that we deserve to have at all times. So that's my little quick spill about what it was like for me starting a handbag company. Don't forget if you have any questions to comment below. Um, I have to do a plug that is definitely very shameless here. And tell you guys to head over to shopondi.com and shop our latest collection. We have something for everybody over there. We got the, the boss mom backpacks for the moms like myself we got the uh corporate work tote laptop bag we got the travel gear over there so make sure you head over to shopondi.com and you shop don't forget to subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video <laughs>